Tell her the truth. Tell her the truth so that she will watch the stars through tears instead of following the one cold star that is her destiny. No, no, Elbert. Let her think. <laughs> yeah. I've been busy with my final coursework at the uni. This was one of my projects related to network forensics. Yes, I'm completing my cybersecurity degree. What I want to talk briefly is that network forensics. I mean, using my coursework that I completed. This machine is designed to analyze our knowledge of Linux-based servers, commands on the shell, report writing. You know, cybersecurity engineers spend too much time for writing reports to the executive who doesn't understand what is the difference between iPhone and Android. You get it? You eat it, compare iPhone and Android together? Ah, oh, anyway, these machines are very simple. There is no HTTPS configured. The network segmentation is poor. The intrusion detection system goes down for 120 seconds after various attempts to restart. And there you can actually do almost whatever you want with almost no trace. There are some things planted on the machines which gives usage spikes to the CPU and a whole lot more stuff. And I fucking needed to write a report around and explain how to fix and give recommendations to solve all these issues found. To complete this, I compiled 5,000 words of a report along with several dozens of notes that I needed to take while I'm investigating these machines and also take screenshots and that almost went up to 100 pages. Who the fuck reads that? I'm not going to court with my case against the attacker. While searching all this stuff, I learned about one thing that I really enjoyed, which was common and control attacks, C2 config files. Common and control C2 attacks represent a critical threat vector that the organizations must guard against. These attacks involve unauthorized control of compromised systems, often facilitated by malware to execute malicious activities remotely. That two sentences are from my paper. <laughs> Judge me every way you want, I ain't gonna care. So what is a common control attack? A common control attack occurs when an attacker gains remote control over a compromised computer system or network of systems. The command aspect refers to the attacker's ability to send commands to the compromised systems, while control describes the attacker's ability to manage the system as a part of a network, often referred to as botnet. So malware plays a pivotal role in C2 attacks, and it's typically delivered through phishing emails, um, malicious downloads or zero-day exploits, among other things. Once the malware installed on a victim's computer, the malware establishes a covered channel to a C2 server controlled by attacker. This server then becomes the central point from which the attacker can issue commands and receive data. There are various types of malwares used in C2 attacks. Trojans, rackets, ransomware, all of them are really bad. So, how do they work? C2 servers communicate with compromised devices using various protocols, such as HTTP, HTTPS, or other custom encrypted protocols. The communication can be direct or through a series of things to obfuscate the attacker's location and activities. The techniques I learned was like polling and push notifications. So when polling, where the malware periodically checks in with the C2 server for commands, like actual bash commands or some kind of a list of commands that gets to the internal services, and we have push notifications, where the server sends commands directly to the infected machines when needed. How I detect it? Well, I went to log folders like everyone, but the trick I did was using ChatGPT to analyze the raw log entries. However, in the real world, detecting C2 traffic can be challenging due to its covert nature and the use of encryption and obfuscation techniques. However, some strategies can be effective, like behavior analysis, monitoring for unusual outgoing traffic or anomalies in a system behavior. 